Welcome back to another episode of The Drop. I'm your host, Crystal Frankenberry, and today I'm joined by our manager of social media, Serena Nunes, as well as our global head of people and culture, Stephanie Pastorelli. Today, we're discussing an article in Vogue that sheds light on the challenging landscape of women's roles in the workforce and how cultural perceptions have shifted over time. So in the early 2010s, the concept of girl boss took center stage, credited to the rise of CEO Sophia Amoruso. And it's all about this empowered woman effortlessly balancing a career and this glamorous lifestyle. But as time went on, this image began to evolve and reflect the controversies, complexities, and challenges that come with modern day work-life balance. And the notion of girl boss became associated with these unrealistic expectations and an almost unattainable standard. So question to you, Stephanie, how has your opinion on the term girl boss evolved over the past decade? And do you believe it's setting an unrealistic standard for women? Thanks, Crystal. Overall, I don't know that the hashtag girl boss movement set unrealistic expectations for women. I would rephrase that. I think it's more along the lines of it set an expectation that is not realistic or representative of all women and what they would define as having full power and agency or professional success in their lives. I think the original persona of girl boss, or at least how it was presented to the world back in 2014 or 10 years ago, I can't believe it's been 10 years, with Sophia Amoruso's book, and then taking off with social media commentary, the blogs, all the news coverage, even Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In philosophy, all of those things seem to center around this spirit of feminist hustle culture. Finding success in a male-dominated business environment and asserting yourself to do the hard work and navigate through adversity. And all of those are good things, but this idea excluded many women and in turn created this vision of success or what being, what is defined as being your own boss as being one particular way. And that way was to either climb the corporate ladder, get into C-suites, start your own business, always be doing something to make money, to be your own boss. Um, And it was really centered around this whole business environment. And while all of those are great accomplishments, they still should be included as success because that is success for many people. There are also other ways for women and people to have success and power in the world. And I think that those components got lost in the conversation. When you think about it, there are many ways that women can have power and agency in their life, such as running their households, raising children, being teachers, mentors, community advocates, allies. How about being happy, having happiness, having mental well-being? Those are pinnacles of success. The list can go on and on. I mean, I could be here all day, but those are things that I don't think were included Um, and and may have been overlooked in in that conversation that I think need to sort of redefine what what it all means. I personally found success in my career, but if anyone were to ask me what my greatest success is, far and away, it is being a single mom to a smart and powerful young woman. And I'm Gen X, I should probably say that. Um, I'm very proud to be raising a, a Gen Z young woman is going to go out in the world, hopefully with all the tools, but is going to do it differently, is going to do it better. If someone were to ask me what my greatest success is, for sure it is that. Everything else is a distant second for me. So I think it's all very personal to the individual and anyone who has agency in their life, particularly marginalized people, in my opinion, are bosses. I think to add on to that, you know, I think that success isn't solely defined by your personal individual career accomplishments, but rather, you know, influenced by your overall happiness, your physical health and the emotional balance. And really, this shift in perception kind of reflects a growing awareness of the challenges faced by many women in achieving such a balance. I also think that growing up seeing these t-shirts and tote bags and notebooks, it was very off-putting to me. And I think it really did have an effect on this kind of ick factor that millennial and Gen Z people have to this hustle culture. Serena, did you see this kind of influence your relationship to girl boss growing up? Yeah, so social media is swamped with lazy girl era content. And in a way that means people are saying, here's how you can make the maximum amount of income while working the minimum amount of hours and getting to live your life and 
live flexibly, work flexibly, and get to see the world. And in a way, I feel like that's learning from older generations. A lot of older generations also speak to this on social media, saying that they feel like they kind of wasted their life away, just climbing the corporate ladder and working nonstop, overworking, barely getting to see their family, barely getting to see the world. So in a way, it's like the Gen Z and younger generations are kind of rebelling in a way, but also just learning from the mistakes of older generations, um, diversifying their income. So all these side hustles that everyone's talking about and trying to get into um, also goes into that lazy era where um, people want to diversify their income and have different multiple streams of income. And in a way, that's also learning from older generations who always preach that the secret to generational wealth is diversifying your income and having passive income, making money while you sleep. And that's something that Gen Z is kind of modernizing. They want to be able to have those different streams of income and have that backbone. I think something that we've learned from the pandemic is you always kind of need a plan B. So that's something that we're learning. And I think in a way, I wouldn't even say it's a lazy girl era. I would say it's more of an eager era. So um, younger generations are eager for income. They're eager for side hustles. They're eager to see the world and do more without killing themselves. Yeah, thank you for that perspective. I think the main thing is that it's clear that this evolving landscape offers new opportunities to define you know, what it means to be a girl boss, uh, but more so just to lead a fulfilling life. And um, I'm really, really excited about that. All right, you guys, thank you so much for dropping in. Until then, stay curious. We'll see you next time on The Drop. Oh.